let's follow up on the new NAFTA and what we are learning about the deal with four members of Parliament. Arif Varani is an Ontario Liberal MP. Garnet Jenis is an Alberta Conservative MP. Marilyn Gill is the Deputy Whip, Whip for the Bloc Québécois, and she has two aluminum smelters, as it turns out, in her riding of Manicouagan in Quebec. And Lindsay Matheson is an Ontario New Democrat MP and her party's deputy critic for international trades. Good to see you all. Thanks for being here. Mr. Varani, let me start with you. How do you respond to criticism that your government buckled to pressure from the U.S. and Mexico to ratify this trade deal without stronger guarantees on aluminum? Well, what I would say to that criticism is that it's an inaccurate portrayal of actually what's transpired over the last couple of years. The status quo ante was that we had absolutely zero guarantee for aluminum or steel content, uh, North American content, uh, with respect to things that were being manufactured. As of uh, today, as of now, we have a 70% guarantee that 70% of the aluminum and steel that's being used in the manufacture of these goods will be made with North American aluminum and steel. That is a great day for Canadians right across this country, including in Quebec. That's a step forward. Mr. Janish, should the government have walked away from this deal, uh, given everything else that's in it because it couldn't get stronger guarantees on aluminum? Well, obviously the Conservative Party is supportive of free trade with the U.S. and Mexico, but we've seen a lot of failures in terms of the execution in these negotiations from the government. And it's very frustrating as an opposition party in a minority parliament, the government uh, has been way behind in terms of giving any information to the opposition or briefing us. You see how in the United States, Democrats and Republicans are involved in these conversations because there's a recognition of the important role that the legislature plays. Uh, we are going to examine the details here. Uh, we know that the government has made significant concessions from where we were with the previous NAFTA. Uh, but, you know, we're going to do the responsible thing, review all these details, and our support shouldn't be presumed or taken for granted. We're going to be holding the government accountable for what, what is in the deal, and it would have made a lot more sense for them to engage Parliament much sooner in this process. Okay. Marilyn Gill, uh, how bad can this deal be for the aluminum industry, uh, and it's largely centered in the province of Quebec, mm -hmm. when, when the president of the association, uh, Monsieur Simard, uh, told me on this program that he still wants the deal passed. He's not happy that there's no... Uh, no uh, further guarantees for the aluminum industry, but he says, look, it would be a mistake to block this deal. What's your response to that? Well, there are two things in that. Uh, first, you say the industry itself, but there are also the workers. The workers in our regions, like Manuquega, for example, because uh, uh, maybe they're asking for compensations. Well, it's one thing, but people want to want to work first. And compensations, it can mean that they will take the money and go elsewhere because there are multinationals, so they can go elsewhere. So we're losing, and the seventy percent is not quite right. Uh, this is very two ways, two measures. Because 70% uh, is for the steel. We say, of course, uh, the, the pieces have to be made either of steel or uh, mm -hmm. aluminium in North America, which means Mexico, which means that there will maybe be a lot of uh, um, aluminium dumping in Mexico. They will bid pieces and then flood the whole uh, North America. But it's going to be real real bad for Quebec, where 90% of the aluminum is, uh, is found. Okay. Uh, Lindsay Matheson, mm -hmm. if, um, let me ask you what, what your thoughts on this. Uh, where, where, how much of the, we, we know that there's criticism for uh, the lack of guarantees on aluminum, but mm -hmm. should, that, uh, should that torpedo this deal? Well, I think that we, we really need to take the, to the time to look at this deal in, in, in full. Um, we haven't had the opportunity, as Garnet had, had said. Uh, the devil's in the details, as they say, and, and this is a large deal. Certainly, we are very interested in ensuring that, that those workers are protected, um, that those good jobs, those community-building jobs are protected, so that's key. We're also looking at um, the concessions on supply management. We're looking at um, some of, the, of those labor uh, strengthening provisions the, the environmental protections, we need to ensure that those are enforceable. And so it's about taking the time, having the time in Parliament, too, to fully debate them. Um, in the past, the Conservatives, or the, sorry, the Liberals, haven't uh, provided a full discussion about really significant um, trade deals. And so I think that that's really important as oh, well. Okay. I, I mean, I want to ask all of you, and let me start with Mr. Verani, like, in the, in the, in the, as we open up the context for this, there are going to be some concerns about the deal. But what, like, what, what do Canadians, what do you want Canadians to look at here, Mr. Verani? And, and I think it's, is it in the context of, look, yes, there are some details not everybody's going to be happy with, but the, the larger product of this is certainty on, on trade uh, with international partners. Is, is that really what the debate comes down to here? 
Absolutely, Peter. I mean, the step back proposition when you're talking to somebody at their door and you have 15 seconds is that we have $2 billion of goods that travel across that U.S.-Canada border every single day. Maintaining access to that market is critical to the Canadian economy and we would be paralyzed without it. In terms of three points of rebuttal, there is a lot of appetite in a minority parliament for this deal to be examined. It will be examined. We will respect Legislation will be tabled. The, the, par the parties opposite will have the time to debate this piece of legislation. But I will point out it is a little bit rich uh, coming from the Conservatives when 10 months ago they were urging us to take any deal to capitulate entirely. That is and now they true. want to okay. renegotiate. Hang on, Mr. Janice. Hang, hang on. I'll get to you, I'll get to you then, next. Hang on. Hang on. The extreme. And if I could finish, Garnet, thank you. And I, will, the third, I will get to Mr. And, Janice in a moment. Go and ahead. the third point I would make is that our resolve to protect workers and to protect aluminum workers in particular should never be doubted when tariffs were imposed over 200 we imposed retaliatory tariffs we've ensured all of those tariffs have been removed and a 70 percent uh, manufacturing content okay. has been maintained and mr janice go ahead and please address this issue as well of what some imperfections that you may see in the deal versus the idea of certainty of having a deal well, sure. I mean, first of all, it's quite clear that Arif is completely making things up with respect to our position. Uh, we've criticized the government's... Okay, yeah, Mr. you Varani, stated it in the House. Mr. Varani, uh, we heard from you. Let's hear from Mr. Jones. Yeah, the, 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 it, this is very clear. We have Democrats and Republicans thanking Canada for conceding in every possible area. We are worse off than we were under the previous NAFTA, but access to the American market is very, very important. The, the Liberals have made many mistakes along the way in terms of failing to defend Canada's interest, uh, and I think it would have made much more sense to engage the opposition in a minority parliament much earlier on in the process. We're going to examine the, this deal, we're going to look at it, uh, and obviously we face a narrowed choice, which is between this deal or, or no deal, or if we can push for improvements. But, but in, in, in general terms, it was the government's job to try and negotiate a better yeah, deal than the previous deal, and they didn't I don't succeed see you pushing, I don't see you getting improved. I don't see you, you're not suggesting the deal would be reopened, right? That, that sounds like a nice Well, I, I, think, I think, you know, realistically, the government has put us in a position where, you know, we, 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 we are likely to have a deal that is not as good as the terms of trade that we previously had with the U.S. and Mexico. Okay. And it is what it is. We need to have that trade access. Marie-Lene Gill, would, if, if this is what the deal is, is the Bloc Québécois prepared to vote against uh, this when it comes before Parliament, when the legislation to enact it comes before Parliament? Is the Bloc prepared to say, look, it's not good enough for aluminum workers, even though the head of the industry says we still want the deal? Uh, will the Bloc vote against it? I would like the workers to, to speak out loud also, but what I would like to say is that, as the Bloc said during the electoral campaign, if it's good for Quebec, we're going to vote for it. If it's bad for Quebec, we're going to vote against it. Uh, and it's the second time, well, second time, could be more times also, that Quebec is sacrificed in this deal for others. I mean by that the agricultural sector. Supply we spoke of that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then, and we don't have a plan, a clear plan yet. And there is the aluminium right now. So it's again, Quebec who sacrificed. So for me, it's not about details. It's as big as an elephant in the room. So I can clearly say that it's bad for Quebec. Of course, we wouldn't vote uh, for this. We have to go back on the table. It can be done. So the government, if it's responsible, is going to do that because so it's you're, 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 bad for us. You're calling on the government tonight to reopen uh, of course. Re reopen this deal, go back to the Americans and Mexicans and say it's not good enough. Why not? It's not okay. good for us, so that's All right. its responsibility. Lindsay Matheson, is, is, uh, I know you still want more time to study it, but <laughs> is this something the, the NDP would vote against and reject in this context of uh, certainty versus some imperfections in the deal? Again, uh, yeah, I had said it before, this is, this is about looking at those details. It's about looking at that fuller picture. And uh, I know that I would appreciate uh, having uh, the next few weeks over this, this break in Parliament to talk to my constituents about it, as, as all New Democrats will do. So uh, I would really like to be able to, to take the time and think about this thoroughly. Uh, again, what does this mean to workers? What does this mean to farmers? What does this mean to both the steel and aluminum sectors, uh, to, to everybody who is impacted? 
elected. And uh, I mean, I, I believe that it's it's sad that the Liberal government is trying to take credit for ultimately what the Americans have, have done to improve this deal. And there have been some improvements, so taking that into account, but looking at it as a whole. Okay, uh, Mr. Verani, and, and can you help us at all with the timetable? Uh, both the Prime Minister and the, uh, the Deputy Prime Minister said today they want to get ratification as quickly as possible, perhaps even ahead of the United States, no longer moving in lockstep with the Americans on this in terms of ratification. Should we expect uh, Parliament to be recalled early in January to push this through? I think we will do. We will take whatever steps are necessary to get this done as quickly as possible. But we are still looking to work in concert with our uh, two other uh, allies and colleagues on the North American continent. So that will be indicative and persuasive as to how the timetable lays out. With respect to what Ms. Matheson just said, what I would point out to her very respectfully, I know she's new to, to Parliament, is simply that you cannot improve labour provisions and environmental provisions if you don't have enforceable chapters that are in there in the first instance. That was the progressive change agenda that Christia Freeland and Justin Trudeau pursued. That's You're why we are asserting... credit for it, and that's not the work and, that you did. And again, I'm being interrupted. It's unfortunate than in, in the spirit of cooperative well, parliament, parliament <laughs> that, uh, that Mr. Jenis and Ms. Matheson are interrupting me. What I'm indicating is that you don't get a better agreement if you don't start with progressive trade position, provisions that were put in there in the first instance by Ms. Freeland, at which point which were prompted criticism by my, our Conservative colleagues okay, on the floor of the chamber. Mr. Jenis, uh, how quickly do you think this should be ratified? Well, again, I mean, just, just to respond to what Arif has said, and, uh, you know, we've had some back and forth, uh, both of us here, and he's completely misstated the, the conservative position on this. Again, we, we want to see ratification of a good deal, uh, but we haven't been included uh, in the process earlier. The government has, has not been forthright in sharing information with opposition parties. So are you bruised and, enough over that to vote against it then? Well, we're, we are going to review the deal now when we have the, the opportunity to do so. Uh, and of course that trade access is important. We know that the government has made many concessions along the way. Uh, but, but to answer your question directly, I mean, our vote is going to be based on, uh, on what is in the best interests of Canadians, okay. not on any sense of being, being bruised or not. I just, it's, it's not not the way uh, that a government should function in a minority parliament to uh, to completely ignore okay, the but... opposition and then say, okay, take it. Marie-Lène Gill, does the Bloc Québécois need more time to study this or have you arrived where you're at in terms of whether you'd support it or not? In terms of ratification, do you care when, when the, the ratification process takes place? Well, of course, there is still time. Like you said, uh, it, it, we're not in the urge uh, to sign it. We want uh, some content. We don't want something to be uh, to be uh, quick. Uh, so uh, right now, as it looks, uh, of course, the block would be against. So maybe there are other surprises. I hope there are not, uh, because we were at the end of the the process. Right. As I said, we're going to vote against if it's against Quebec. And Lindsay Mathis, and you think it would be important to provide opposition parties with some time to do a little study on this before you're forced to uh, decide on ratification? Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we went through with CETA uh, in particular, it was a, a rush through and it didn't give uh, all parties the time that they need to look at it. I mean, the last NAFTA, it was uh, locked in for, for Canada for 25 years. And in my riding in southwestern Ontario as a whole, we lost over 300,000 manufacturing jobs. So that's certainly not something that we want to do and repeat in terms of mistakes. So it's, it's up to everybody to be working together, absolutely, but uh, to take the time to actually look at the details. All right. Thank you all for your time tonight. We'll continue to follow the process. Some interesting days ahead. Thank you all. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very Merci. Much. Thank you. Bye-bye.